Hi, we are from Team 12 and we will be doing financial reporting on Capital Land. My name is Mok Ting. I'm Ye Chi. I'm Aini. I'm Xin Chi. Uh, right now, we'll be talking about the financial performance for Capital Land in financial year 2015 and 2016 in comparison between 2000, final year of 2016 and 2017. As, we, as the figures shown on the screen are in the millions. So for revenue, this is an increase from 10% from financial year 2015 whereas from 2017 there's a decrease of 12% from two, uh, 2017. The amount of revenue show how well capital land is performing during the financial year. And for the earning before interest tax, uh, for both year there will be an increase of 43 and 750 uh, respectively, respectively for the year. The increase of earning before interest means the company earns more profit than the previous year. So, for the profit before tax, it's whether the company operating and not operating profits before taxes are considered. So, for both years, capital land profit before tax decreased 180,000 and 110,000. In 2017, in 2017, profit after tax and minority has increased from 88.8 percent compared to last year, 6.6 percent. Contribution for increase increasement may come from higher contribution from trading business and higher portfolio and realized fair value gains arising from device. Okay, right now I'll be talking about the social performance for capital land in financial year 2015 and 2016 in comparison between financial year of 2016 and 2017. Since 2005, capital land has established capital land Hope foundation where it is to promote social growth and development of vulnerable children with respect to their education, health care and shelter needs. It is also to improve the quality life for elderly in Singapore through health care, deeper social integration, and better living condition. Every year, Capital Land would donate 0.5% from their net operating profit to Capital Land Co Foundation. In 2016, CHF donated up 300,000 to six charities under President Challenge 2016 through hashtag eSnapGive and Instagram charity campaign. This campaign is to promote the spirit of giving through the sharing of social posts about how food holds special meaning to everyone, whether as an individual or a community. It is also to encourage people to think of food as the ingredient that build more conducive, resilient and caring Singapore. In 2017, CHF has donated 250000 to National Authority Foundation Singapore, NAF. The foundation will go towards juvenile independent authorities from low-income families over the four years. A portion of the fund will also aid in raising public awareness of JIA and facilitate early detection of the... In 2017, the profit of the year, comprehensive income and the foreigner exchange is shown on the above table. The difference of the profits and comprehensive income is actually approximately amount of the foreigner exchange relations. As the um, a sum is not huge, there, this means that there is no extraordinary ha events happening. Foreign currency relations is actually classified as a potential item to be recorded under the profit and loss. Hence, it has to be deducted from the profits. As the company is huge, they are actually located worldwide. Hence, the currency is actually mainly US dollar, Sing dollar, and Vietnamese dollar. The currency also depends on which country you are located at. So in 2016, the figures are shown in the above. In the financial statement, the difference is due to the investment, which explains why there is a huge difference in the foreign exchange relations. The group investment bank loans makes the currency risk increase. Therefore, there is no effectiveness was recognized for the asset. So intangible asset is a non-monetary asset that has no fiscal nature. There are two types of intangible assets, the identifiable ones and the unidentifiable ones. 
So we shall also call goodwill. So one example of goodwill for capital is the export limited. So there will be an impairment loss in the current amount of an asset. Let's say it's estimated recoverable amount. So as the current uh, amount of intangible assets are revealed at each reporting date, and the estimated recoverable amount of the asset is assessed by the creator of its value in use and its fair value less selling cost. So to assess the value in use, the estimated future cash flows are discounted to their present value using a pre-tax discount rate that reflects the current market assessment. So uh, for the impairment test of goodwill, so the recover amount is estimated at each reporting date and when there are indication of impairment and then departs. So the goodwill in the cash generating unit CU are aggregated to reflect the lowest level of impairment for internal reporting. The impairment loss recognized in cash generating unit are allocated first to reduce the current amount of goodwill allocated to other assets on a pro rata basis. So the impairment test on the CGU are determined based on the value in use calculation of the discounted cash flow projection based on the reason of 3 to 5 years. So the discount rates applied are the weighted average of the cost of capital from relevant business segments. And the ter terminal growth rates used for CGU are the expectation of the long term average growth rates of the industry the CGU corporate. So as you can see from the table, the total current amount of goodwill has increased in 2017 as compared to 2016. This is due to the goodwill of the self storage business being written off as well as acquisition of other CGUs. So what is a cash generating unit? So in AASB 136, a cash generating unit is defined as the smallest identifiable group of assets that generate cash inflows that are largely independent of cash inflows from other assets or group of assets. So the main identification criteria of CGU in capital will be influenced by how they monitor its operations and how management makes decisions about the continuing or disposing of the assets. However, the, the main requirement of identification of CGUs is based largely on independent cash inflows from others. Next, I'll be illustrating to you whether Capital Land uses cost of fair method for their PBD. Now, as you can be seen in the slides, the net fair value gain of 668 million in financial year 2017, of which 307 million were realized revaluation gains, which mainly comes from investment property. Next, I'll be using the more than recently acquired by Capital Land in the year 2017 to showcase to you why they use the spare method. As can be seen, the, China, the Capital Land Retail China Trust, which is Capital Land's in house valuer, valued it at 3,360 million, of which, which equivalent to 688 million Sing dollars. Now, under accounting standard 16, PBE is initially measured at cost, but subsequent users either cost of fair method as and it is important that it uses the same method for assets under the same category. Right now, I'm going to illustrate to you which model between cost and revaluation, revaluation is to be preferred for a true and fair measurement of company's assets. Now, the historic cost model is often being criticized for giving an unrealistic value for real estate which usually appreciate over time. But for revaluation model, this model provides an accurate valuation which is very important for a real estate company as values of property usually varies from time to time. As for factors wise, historic cost model does not take into factors of inflation and changing of price in global economy. But for revaluation models, factors such as inflation um, property, location, and surroundings are often taken into consideration before they measure the cost of the property. For the valuation uh, frequency, historic cost model is only carried out once every year, while for revaluation model is carried out frequently so to provide an accurate and estimated 
cost based on the factors that's being measured, based on the factors that's being mentioned earlier. For historic cost model, during inflation, it tends to overstate the profit. While for revaluation model, the risk of overstating value is only due to factors such as unforeseen circumstances and or unprofessional valuer. Therefore, revaluation method is to be preferred for a true and fair measurement of company's asset. We have come to the end of our we have come to the end of our presentations and this will be our reference. Thank you.